With GPU prices finally falling, I wanted to take a look at whether you're better off building or buying a gaming PC at the start of 2022. And specifically, are you better off building or buying a $1,000 gaming PC? So let's start off looking at our PC build. If we were going to actually build a PC, what components would we use to get that perfect $1,000 PC? So if we're taking a look at our build, we have an i5-12400F uh, and an ASRock B660M motherboard. So the 12400F, six cores, 12 threads, kind of very similar to the 10400F and the 11400F in that it's just uh, the regular kind of performance cores. There's no performance and efficiency cores like you get with a 12600K or a 12700K or a 12900K. So six core processor, um, no real crazy new architecture for that chip, but very steady and very reliable uh, at that six core mark. Very similar to what you would get with like a 5600X or a 5600G from AMD, or like I said, a 10400 or an 11400 from Intel. We also have CL16 DDR4 memory at two by eight gig. Uh, set so 16 gigs at 3200 megahertz speed and a very cheap price at only $50 for the silicon power uh, setup. You can also go for like a Corsair or another setup in terms of the memory. It might cost you like 10 extra dollars, but if you feel more comfortable with one of those brands, it's not going to hurt your budget too bad. We then get an Intel 670p one terabyte M.2, so one terabyte NVMe storage, not the fastest NVMe drive, but still. Plenty fast enough for, uh, you know, typical games and things like that. You might also want to add an HDD down the line if you're going to throw a lot of games on your system. And then when it comes to kind of the actual costly part of this build, we have an ASRock RX 6600. So I was a little kind of unsure about what graphics card to go with, but I ended up going with the RX 6600 specifically because at that $425-ish dollar price point from Newegg right now, it's kind of hard to beat. Uh, it's going to beat out a 1660 Super pretty easily. It's also going to beat out pretty much a 2060 in 1080p and even 1440p gaming. Uh, and then the 3060 is just prices are still insane on all the RTX 3000 series cards. So it's just not really going to fit in this budget. And then we could step it up to a 6600 XT. But then again, it's like an extra $100, $150. And then we're going to fall outside of that $1,000 budget. So the RX 6600, really, really good 1080p high FPS performing card. And then if you wanted to game at 1440p, you might have to turn down settings to medium or high, but then you, you should see over 100 FPS in a lot of titles. But if you wanna play at ultra settings and stuff like that, you're probably looking at closer to 60 FPS at 1440p. And then we have a typical Fantex P300A case, very reliable case, good airflow, uh, no problems there. And an EVGA 650 watt. Uh, 80 plus bronze certified power supply. So all in all, this build comes in at $1,010. So you're getting a pretty much medium end 1440p system for a thousand bucks. But you also have to consider Windows. You can install it, not by a code, and you're fine with Windows 10. Uh, you'll have the little watermark. You won't be able to completely personalize everything. But Windows will run for free on your system. You can of course go with one of the cheaper kind of unknown codes off of eBay or one of the other sites, or you could buy an official Windows 10 Home or Pro license and that'll cost you over $100. So you're gonna add a little bit of money to this budget for Windows, but of course you're getting to build this thing yourself. So you have a lot more customization and personalization when it comes to cable routing and cleanup. Uh, you're making sure everything is connected properly, that the thermal paste is applied good. So overall, you just get a little more control over the build and the assurances that you're gonna have the right build at the end of the day. If you do buy a system integrated build from uh, either you know Amazon, Best Buy, NDXT, Newegg, you don't necessarily know that that build's going to come in perfectly, you know, when you get it out of the box. But warranty, returns, all of that, you're you're safe buying a PC from one of those uh, places. You just don't know. When you build it yourself, you know you're going to build it right and that things are going to work, hopefully. 
Uh, but again, you also have warranties on all of these components from the manufacturer. So you might have a little bit extra hassle dealing with the warranty process for individual components versus an entire system, but you still have the warranty there. So now let's jump over to our competitors for a thousand dollar build and see if you're better off just buying a pre-built versus building your own system even now in 2022. So let's come over to the tried and true, the classic, the one I've been kind of putting up for the past year or so. Uh, this is the CyberPower Gaber Extreme. So this is the i5-11400 with an RTX 2060. You get 500 gig NVMe. So we do cut down on the NVMe and you're getting eight gigs of RAM in single channel versus 16 gigs in dual channel. So you can always buy an extra dim of RAM and throw it in there for 30, 40 bucks. I would just recommend comparing this apples to apples. So the configuration is a little bit troublesome in my head. It shows this build as an i3-12100F with an RX 6500 XT, but the title clearly shows an RTX 2060 and an i5-11400F. So I don't know what Amazon is, is doing with this particular product. But overall, you're getting a one generation older CPU. You're also getting last generation of NVIDIA graphics card. And the 2060 and the 6600 are very, very comparable graphics cards. Very similar in terms of performance. If we take a look at Tom's hardware review of the RX 6600, they compare it directly against this, the 2060 on their setup. So you get, you know, maybe 8% less performance on the RTX 2060 at 1080p. You get slightly better performance with ray chasing turned on on the 2060 versus the RX 6600, but that's been a struggle for AMD on all their cards. And then if we take a look at 1440p, uh, again, very similar numbers. You're gonna see, you know, couple fps difference between the rx 6600 and the rtx 2060 so overall these are very very similar cards and the systems are very very similarly priced 1013 for our pre-built from amazon versus 1010 for our build on pc part picker um, but there's some other options out there as well you also have this cyber power pc with a ryzen 5 5600g and an RX 6600, same eight gigs of RAM, same 500 gig SSD. So you're pretty much just swapping out an 11400F for a 5600G and a 2060 for a 6600. So overall, you're gonna get a very similar uh, computer to what you can actually build today, but the less prominent components like your RAM, power supply, SSD, you get a little bit more control and configurability when you build it yourself, which means you get you know an extra 500 gigs of storage, you get an extra eight gigs of RAM, and you're probably getting a better power supply uh, if you buy it yourself versus the one you're gonna get in a pre-built. Very little control over those kinds of components when it comes to a pre-built. So some of the benefits of buying a pre-built is you don't have to build it yourself. Of course, you don't have to take the time and the energy to troubleshoot if anything goes wrong um, or return or, or warranty individual components. You just get the full system. And of course, you get a warranty on these systems so that you can always get support from the manufacturer. Uh, of course, CyberPower PC, they have pretty good support. But if you buy, you know, another pre-built at this price point from, let's say, an NZXT or a Digital Storm or any of those other system integrators, you're going to get good support and good warranty for your system. Um, so that's one of the biggest pieces. You're also getting, of course, free Windows 11 or Windows 10. Uh, you don't have to spend the extra money on an official code from Microsoft. And then you don't have to go the route of either having the watermark or buying a, a code off of eBay or a site like G2A or one of those. So those are kind of the, the big drivers to buy a pre-built. Price-wise, there's really no difference between a pre-built and building the system yourself, um, except for those extra kind of little components that you just don't get with the pre-built and the configurability that you get with building your own system. So if you're comfortable building your own system, you're not too worried about you know troubleshooting and those kinds of things. Maybe you already built a system and you want to build another one. Right now at the $1,000 budget, you are kind of better off just building your own PC because of those little things, because of the RAM, because of the power supply, because of the storage, you're just better off building one of these systems. You also get to choose the components themselves. In a pre-built, you don't really know what graphics card manufacturer or, or card you're gonna get. So when, you, when it comes to just building your own system, that configurability, that specification of exactly what you want, it's really, really nice to have. And at the same price as a pre-built, with a little bit extra RAM and a little bit extra storage, 
you're definitely better off just building a $1,000 PC at this point in time. And as prices continue to drop on GPUs, I expect that building a PC will become even more affordable than buying a pre-built. So what do you guys think? At the $1,000 budget, would you build or buy a gaming PC? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you have any other questions, leave those down there as well. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.